So the defense minister, <coughs> excuse me, believes the deployment of 25,000 troops will put an end to the insurrection behind unrest last week. It's just one of the topics discussed on the Defence Web website. Editor Guy Martin gives us a preview of what else to expect. Before we start looking forward, Guy, let's look backwards. Firstly, very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. You believe that what was happening, or I was reading this on your website, is just a precursor of what is likely to come, considering that we still have this grinding and growing poverty. Oh, good evening, and uh, thanks for having me. Um, yes, I believe that um, sending the military in to deal with this, uh, this unrest is only a temporary solution. And the Defence Minister, uh, when she was briefing the Joint Standing Committee on Defence this evening, um, she alluded to that as well. And I think that the consensus is that the military is, is, can help the police to calm things down. But until the structural problems um, are, are solved, then we are going to likely experience the same thing over and over again. Now, if you look at, um, in the past, we've had um, xenophobic riots, and a lot of those uh, xenophobic riots um, devolved into general looting and criminality. Um, so I think that until we solve the massive um, unemployment problem and start creating jobs, try and reduce the, the youth unemployment rate, which stands at about 75%. Mm -hmm. um, all of these um, structural issues will keep bumping up to the front. And um, I believe that whether or not there, there was indeed an orchestrated effort behind um, this unrest, whether it was an attempted coup, an insurrection, call it what you will, it would never have um, taken off as, as well as it did if there were, weren't those structural problems there. If you have people um, unemployed, then they are going to have the time and the energy to go out and write and loot. Mm. If you have people working in, in the nine to five jobs, it's a different situation. Yeah, I mean, the social unrest has been a long time brewing, hasn't it? Uh, the SANDF, I mean, you wonder how effective it will be. I believe just at the moment the troop deployment will cost something like 600 million rand. We've also seen budget cuts there. So how effective can they be? Well, I think they will, uh, they will be quite effective. If you look at um, what uh, the SCNDF um, contributed um, to COVID relief, um, to um, Operation Atlela when they were supporting um, lockdown measures, when they were deployed to the Western Cape to, to combat um, gangs, and other criminality, I think they will be effective. And already there are, I think, about 5,000 soldiers um, in, in uh, Kosovo Natal and about 7,000 in um, Gauteng. And we already we are seeing um, the, the unrest and the, the violence decreasing. So I think they will be effective. Um, I, I'm, I'm quite optimistic about that. But the problem is, once they have, once once the mission is over, then what? I mean, if you, you can you can put a, a band aid on the problem, but if you don't if you don't uh, sort out what's actually underneath it, we might see the the SNDF having to be deployed at a later stage. Go and ahead. Uh, the defence minister. Sorry, let me, let me just jump uh, in here. Um, you know, a lot of the security was conducted by people living in their homes, you know, uh, ordinary South Africans took to the streets, many of them with guns, and they were able to protect themselves and their families. We know that there is a new gun law uh, coming up, which means that you can't even have a gun for self-protection. I mean, do you think that this needs to be addressed again, considering what we saw? Yes, definitely. Um, I think that um, there's been actually an overwhelming response um, towards the proposed changes, and I think there's close to 100,000 um, uh, complaints, basically, against the, these changes. And if the, the government does go ahead and try to um, remove the right um, to or remove self-defence as a reason for owning a gun, I, I think it's going to, to go nowhere. It'll be it's also almost a laughable proposition, considering what's what's happened um, in the last week. All right, let's go back to the troops, the 25,000 in South Africa. How will it affect other deployments? In Mozambique, for example, we know that uh, Rwanda is going to be stepping in there. And what are you expecting from Eswatini? 
Well, we have a, a Southern African Development Community fact-finding mission in Eswatini. They will be there until the 22nd of July. Um, so we're not going. We're not sure if they're going to uh, require a uh, force be sent there. Uh, but it is rather alarming that there's this sort of belt of instability across across Southern Africa. We've got major um, instability in South Africa. Um, Eswatini is precarious, and obviously Mozambique is is precarious. So Rwanda has um, sent sent uh, troops, but that's a bilateral mission. Um, they that isn't part of the SADC agreement. Um, no SADC troops have properly been deployed. Um, South Africa was supposed to send troops um, last Thursday, and we have made uh, commitments, but it doesn't appear that uh, we will be sending troops any time soon. Uh, the Defence Minister has said that there are no South African troops on the ground in Mozambique. Um, so we will have to continue monitoring um, that situation and uh, see what happens there. But since the SNDF is, is very, very thinly stretched at the moment. Um, to get those 25,000 troops on the on the streets, they are pulling in everyone. So even support support staff, there's people from Signals on the uh, Signals Intelligence. They're on the streets. Um, this sort of massive deployment, it's it's unsustainable, and it does um, affect other SNDF responsibilities. For instance, we've got over a thousand soldiers on the borders uh, doing border patrols. Um, we've got the SNDF, we've got 1,000 troops in the DRC with the peacekeeping mission there. Um, okay, the we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, apologies for that. I really enjoyed reading your website and talking to you this evening. Thank you.